Say the word. Thank <laughs> you. 
This door's magnetically sealed. I can't believe this. The ship's right out there, and we can't get to it. Huh? What is that piece of junk saying? How can you even understand that noise? Alright, well, if he can slice the door open from the terminal above, don't let me stop him. I hear you.
I hear you. We're gonna need some time to fire up the engines. Let's get the laser turret a workout. If they hit us, we're dead. But if they keep missing us, we're dead. It's great odds.
Somebody shut that trash compactor up. I'm doing all I can, and that's not enough. What'd you do to make these guys so mad? Well, either they hit us and destroy us, or they hit an asteroid and make the whole field go nova. Now with all these asteroids around us, we'd enter hyperspace in pieces. We have to clear that field first. Thing is, we clear the field and they're gonna have a clear shot at us. That'll take out the whole field, the colony, and maybe us. We might not even be able to jump to hyperspace in time. Then we die here. Choose now. Hold on, this is gonna get a little rocky. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per... Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship, my eye. Next thing you know, it's gonna claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on, get! Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. Whatever lies you tell yourself are of no consequence. The Sith believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Jedi Civil War destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi and the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall and the civil war that followed. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought.
Look, enough with the Wii already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end I fear it may not be enough. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. <laughs> like so many Jedi, you hear, but you do not listen. You have much to learn, but we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger, especially with that hand of hers. We're on autopilot until we hit Telos. Until then, a droid could fly this thing. Besides, I think our passenger could use your help. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Are you blind? If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean, a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. In case you hadn't noticed, she won't say two words to me. But she'll talk your ear off any chance she gets. What you think matters to her. A lot. She wants you to respect her. Besides, we haven't got much else to do until Telos. Oh, don't give me that. All it takes is being around people enough to read them. You should try it sometime.
Have you come for more answers? There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me, any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart. The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. Save your pity. I am here to save you, not the other way around. I do not need your condescension nor your lectures. If anyone needs training and guidance, it is you. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme. Then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragas. I confess its nature eludes me as well, but the bond is strong and its roots run deep. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi Knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. If I were you, I would see... Ask, and I will answer. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V. It is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Indeed, the Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. Two Jedi Knights, Revan and Malak, defied the Jedi Council. They challenged the Mandalorian fierceness and brutality on the battlefield with a viciousness of their own. Revan's entrance into the conflict marked the true beginning and end of the war. It was Revan who drove the Mandalorians back into the unknown regions. Yes, 
I have heard tales of Malachor V and Revan's part in it. I know you served there in that final battle. It must have been a terrible thing. You speak the truth. The war's end was merely another beginning, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Many believed the Mandalorians defeated at Malachor V, but the Mandalorians taught the Jedi much through battle, and so it was that Malak, Revan, and the Jedi that followed them discovered their true natures in the Mandalorian Crusade. But you know this. Consumed them? No. Taught them. Defined them? Yes. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Revan and Malak, and all the Jedi that served them, turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic. Wounds that bleed still. As all Sith do without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. No one knows, certainly not I. Korriban lies in ruins, Revan is gone, and the blade of war he promised to stab into the heart of the galaxy has withdrawn. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive. A culture's teachings, and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated. Their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat. It is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War, it drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. I would see to that fool in the co- He is a fool and an imbecile. Watch that one. He